Okay guys, if I'm being honest, I had this whole cute little skit planned involving this little thing and something about rabbits and cannons, but if I'm being honest, it's the coolest sword in One Piece. We're making Yoru. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Frank, and wow, I look like a priest right now. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Kuma? <laughs> Anyway, today so we're doing it, like guys. We are worse. making Yoru from One Piece. I've wanted to make this sword for a long time, and Walsh 3D did release the files like a year ago. I've just been kind of slacking on it, but now this is the build video for it. I've been a massive One Piece fan for quite a while. A Luffy tattoo, spoiler alert if you don't know, anyway. But in this video, I'm going to take you through it all. The 3D printing, the painting, the files, how to get that awesome gold look like this. And by the end of it, you'll be able to make your own Yoru too. So first up, the 3D files. Okay, file time. We're going to go through this kind of quick because, man, this is going to be a long video if I don't. Make your way over to Walsh 3D, find Yoru, message him, go to Wireframe 3D, however you need to get the files, go and get them. You'll be met with a bunch of renders and basically a guide on how to assemble it or at least what you need to print, all of this. He was nice enough to cut things into many different sections for many different printers, but I'm going to show you the way I'm going to print it. And I do recommend opening up the README for once and actually seeing the diameters of all the stuff you're going to need and how much you're going to need to actually print. Let's start simple with the handle. He's included two different versions, a wrapped and an unwrapped version. Uh, since I was going to be wrapping this from the get-go, I decided to take the cut-up version and I just printed it on a small printer at a rather higher infill. I think I used 20 to 25% infill. Don't forget to print the little shoulder for the top of the handle and the little palm holder for the orb that goes on the bottom. Next up, the cross guard. He's included two different versions of the cross guard. There is an extruded and a engraved version. This is the extruded, this is the engraved. It's gonna mess with the supports depending on how you print it. Definitely experiment with some things, but I will tell you if you print them standing up and don't use supports inside all those details, they still come out just fine with any modern printer. However, I wanted to save myself some trouble with sanding and I have rather large 3D printers. So I was able to cut them in half and lay them perfectly flat on my CR10 or my CRM4 and my CR10 Max. This way I was able to go into settings and use the ironing feature on the shell to make the top surface really nice and smooth. And you're gonna see that later in the video. If you can enable ironing on certain parts, it can really help the post-processing. Not everybody's gonna have the luxury of being able to print this huge part flat. It almost maxes out the width and depth of my build plate. So you might have to go and actually cut up this file, but I'm gonna print four parts just like this. I sent two on my CRM4 and I sent two on my CR10 Max. Just make sure you mirror them properly so you can actually connect the bottoms. You can see the bottoms here kind of look like creepers from my Minecraft, ooh, but they need to go together in a certain way. This little cutout that sits at the top here that looks like the mouth, that's actually where the blade slots into. He's also gone and included channels for metal rods in the cross guard. Now, because I'm printing the thing flat like this, this is the strongest it's ever gonna be. I'm not gonna use metal rods for that, but if you print them standing up, your layer adhesion is gonna be different. You might wanna consider putting rods to the cross guard too, but just consider it's gonna add weight. Next up is the Suba. Again, I am pretty blessed to have a rather large 3D printer. My Elegu Neptune 3 Max is the only printer tall enough to do this in one shot. Uh, my M4 and CR10 Max are only 450 millimeters. The Neptune 3 Max is 500 millimeters tall. So it can just barely fit the Suba. Now I could tilt it over, I could lay it flat, I could cut it up, he included cut up files, but I wanted to one shot this. However, since it's so tall, I have to print it really slow because as it gets to the top, it's gonna get even more wobbly and you will see that later in the video, it did get a little layer liney near the top, but it's smooth and flat and easily sandable. I didn't use any supports for this and it came out perfect. I just made sure I had a really good base adhesion. I like using a wrapped Sumi. Next up, the blade. Now, I have a 3D belt printer. I can print to infinity and beyond. He did include a bunch of cut up parts for the blade, so print them however you want. You can lay them on their back, you can combine them in mesh mixer, you can print them as tall as you want. Initially, I was gonna try to print the blade in one piece like this. However, it was giving me some weird interfaces in the support holes, and then eventually it failed. You'll talk about, we'll talk about that later. So I decided to cut the blade in half. Now, cutting the blade in half was actually a blessing in disguise. It's going to be even stronger now because it has these inner walls, the bottom layers, this isn't in the model. This is generated because I cut it in half in mesh mixer. So now this blade is gonna be even stronger on top of having two giant support rods through it. So I threw all these at the printers and we we're off to the races. 
As for the gems and decorations and all the little ornaments, if you have a resin printer, I would definitely recommend doing them in resin. Uh, get some green, clear green and clear blue resin. You do have to print quite a bit of them. Just make sure you're counting the proper amount. Um, this could all be one-shotted on a medium-sized printer. In this case, I use the Creality, Creality Halot Pro, I think, and I just did one batch of green and one batch of blue, and they came out beautiful. And I'll show you later in the video how to wet sand and get beautiful glass clarity out of resin prints. It's a really cool trick. This is a really big project, guys. I understand a lot of you are gonna need to print the blade and the cross guards and hilts in smaller parts. And all of it goes back to other videos I've had, PLA welding and sanding. It's just combining all those skills to bring all of this together and make a really cool sword. I can't go and cover everybody's printers with everybody's settings. I've done a lot of tutorials on all the preferred settings, so you guys just might have to go and watch those. But now that everything's in the garage, on the printers, let's get to building this thing. So the handle was printed in four parts, the little pommel piece, and because I'm gonna be wrapping this in cloth, I did not seem it necessary to actually print it in one shot. I, I could have stood it up on like the Max or something, but all I did was PLA weld them together super strong. I actually did this on a Twitch stream live. Um, I did the handle and I did this whole cross guard, but we'll talk about this in a second. Um, but this is super strong. Like I'm not worried about this, and the fact that it's gonna get two metal rods through the entire length of it, this thing, this thing's fine. Now this cross guard is a different story. I was able to print these four pieces completely flat. Now I understand not everybody's gonna have the luxury of doing that. I was only able to do that because I have my Maxes and my CRM490, whatever the heck that printer is. I was able to print these perfectly flat. You can see I was able to turn on the ironing feature. Let's see if this will focus, just like that. You can see this actually came out really smooth. Both printers have an ironing feature. You can see that it got a little wobbly there at the top, layer liney, but all of the details came out perfect. I have no issues with these. This will be super easy to smooth down anyway with a palm sander. So yeah, this is all one piece. I went and glued this little um, guard cap to the end and I made sure I lined up the holes. So once I put the handle on, this will just slot right in and then the rods will come all the way through here. So yeah, let's talk about the blade. I was able to print these in thought I just cracked it. Uh, I was able to print these in one piece, ha ha ha, yeah. Initially, I tried to print them on the belt printer in one actual solid piece standing up like this. However, I bumped into it um, a little bit into the print and it failed. I don't wanna talk about it. However, then I reevaluated getting the metal rod in there, getting the supports out of the, uh, the, the support holes. So I cut it in half and I printed it flat. And now it's gonna be even stronger than it would have been before because now I have inner walls as well as outer walls. Gluing these together is gonna to make this incredibly rigid on top of the metal support rod I'm gonna put through it. So this gives me a lot more strength. It just makes the blade a lot more beefier and it doesn't wanna break. Now for this, I'm using some just generic threaded metal rods. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot and they fit in here perfectly. If you're having trouble getting them through the hole, um, attach them to a drill and you can actually just drill them in. But don't try to do that through like normal infill. It's not gonna end well. It's gonna destroy the print. Now I did make one longer than the other and I'll show you why in the blade, but I should be able to just slide these through. Yep. Now inside the blade, there are two channels for metal rods. I'm only using one because I don't wanna add a crazy amount of weight to the blade. So I'm using one non-threaded rod on the back slot right here. So this is gonna sit right up there. And then the handle, the longer one is gonna compensate for the bottom. It sits just about there because of the, um, the cross guard. Uh, there's a little bit of you know, a distance there. So I cut one of them to length so that they butt up against each other perfectly. And it's nice and strong. And one odd thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and glue this metal rod into place because I don't want this moving, potentially moving around or rattling or wobbling. So I'm just gonna douse glue on this and secure this into place. And you know, while we're at it, we might as well just glue the blade together. Um, I could use hot glue, I could probably just put them together and PLA weld the edges, but I'm gonna run some beads of glue along it and then pr just try to press them together and call it a day. I hope. I have glue on my hands. Oh no! Okay, so I made a little whoopsie in my calculations here. When I glued the blades together, I didn't account for the fact that when I had that, the, the, uh, the metal rod all the way through it, it was actually pushing the plastic apart. I guess the holes are just a little bit smaller than what these rods are actually made for. Um, so I have the solid rod glued in there, but with these now pressed together, I couldn't just push the threaded rods in and out. So I had to go and use the drill to actually insert and permanently insert the threaded rods into the blade. So it's all one piece now. 
and I can take the handle off, but these rods are there. I mean, all I'd have to do is reverse the drill to get them out, but the blade is done. That, that's it. Um, it's nice and rigid. I, it, it, it feels great. It barely sags or wobbles if I hold it right here at the end and I couldn't ask for anything better. So now with the soldering iron hot, I'm gonna go start welding this up, making it permanently one piece. Um, and then we're gonna start sanding and smoothing everything and uh, it's gonna be fun. Now, like I said, I've been over PLA welding and sanding plenty of times. Take your time welding the parts together. You can make them as smooth as you want in this process or you can just sand them down later. Uh, depending on how you printed the thing, you're gonna have to vary the way you weld it together. Then I moved on to the sanding stage. Just hit it with some 60 grit and moved on to 220 grit with the power sander. You can hand sand it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, the, the smoother you get it in the sanding stage, the less primer you're gonna have to dump on it to get it nice and smooth. So rinse and repeat until you're happy. Hey, did you guys know it's kinda hot out? Oh, I'm dying right now. Anyway, the blade is sanded. Um, this actually came out rather smooth between the 60 grit and 220 grit. Um, very happy with it. I have no complaints here. You can see there's a line left in it and that is just from um, uh, 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 the metal rod inside of it. Uh, well, the channel for it, just the way it got printed. I can't feel it though. So I'm gonna hit it with a coat of primer before I do anything about it. Now, there are some spots to fill in. The entire back where I had welded it together, there's, uh, there's valleys now because the, it had collapsed. You could fill this in a couple different ways. I could use PLA welding, uh, a 3D pen. Um, I could use some resin smoothing, which we might do a little bit on that. Maybe, we'll see. But for now, what I'm gonna do is use um, some Bondo Spot Putty. Ugh. Where are you? This stuff, it broke the bottle. Um, I'm just gonna run a bead of it along the back, smooth it down, let it dry and sand it. It'll, it's honestly probably the quickest way to do this right now. Um, and then we'll move on to this as well. This sanded down really nicely. Um, I, I collapsed some of the walls right here because I sat in the spot too long, but the front's coming out really smooth. I was able to knock down a lot of the, the wobble at the top here. Um, this is gonna look so sick once it's done. Uh, I, I'm not sure what I wanna do here yet because of where I welded it, this whole spot, this doesn't look good. I need to fill this. This I might use resin smoothing for uh, because resin is a liquid and it self levels. So if I pour some resin on here and let it sit for a, a few minutes, it'll level out. I can brush it around, it'll settle, level out, and then I can cure it and I'll have a nice smooth surface. This is gonna be gold. So I want this to look really, really good. Um, I'm probably gonna use the same gold that was on my Dr. Fate helmet. Um, yeah, I think like I can, I can do that. I can, I can, yeah, and just smooth it. I think we're gonna try that. Okay, so um, I decided to do some resin smoothing. You can see the pool of it right here. Um, I just poured some, it, it's out of date resin, but it still works the same. I just poured it on, smoothed it around with my finger, and then um, it's self-leveled out because it's a liquid and it looks pretty good right now. So I'm just gonna take my UV lamp and cure it. Uh, be careful with this stuff, it is toxic. Wear a respirator, wear a mask. I, I, I'm, I don't practice what I preach, I understand that. Um, but this stuff, it, this is worse to sand than plastic. You know, it, it's resin. It's, the, the dust and particles are way more toxic than the plastic. So I use it very sparingly, but in this instance, what I need it to do, it's gonna work great. So right now it is still a liquid. I'm not gonna look at it. I'm actually gonna use the camera to know I'm doing it right. Cause I don't wanna look at the, um, at the light. Okay, I didn't get nearly as much coverage of this as I should have. This is just another tool in your tool belt to get prints smooth. I just don't like using it because it's messy and it makes a lot more dust and particles. And if you can sand the thing down flat with sandpaper, that just works better for me. This whole process of sanding and smoothing and resin smoothing and Bondo and back and forth is just getting the prints as smooth as possible. So take your time with this. Again, as I always say, the more time you spend in prep and getting things smooth, filling in the layer lines, everything is just gonna come out that much better. Once I was happy with sanding a couple of the bits down, I started dousing everything with primer. Here you can see me laying the part down and using gravity the same way I was using the resin to kind of self-level. If you go heavy enough with uh, filler primer or really any paint, the paint is gonna self-level too. It's gonna fill in the low parts of layer lines and then it's just gonna smooth and level out. But you have to go very heavy on that and you could lose detail, so you need to be careful with it. But I'm just soaking the uh, flat parts in primer just so I have to sand that much less. Again, rinse and repeat until you're happy and you can get your prints looking super smooth.
So resin printing is pretty cool. I already went and printed most of the stuff. I'm doing some reprints right now, but this is the orb and I one shot at it, which was great. Uh, maybe I should have left it hollow, but the biggest complaint I have with this and Walsh has gone and since fixed it is it's a little low poly. If you can see the light, you can actually see the squares that comprise the, um, the ball. If you can't actually have a perfect circle in 3D space. So you use a bunch of squares to make a circle. It's weird. But what I'm gonna now go and do is wet sand this into a nice smooth glass ball. I did something very similar already to the green gems. You can see right through this and you can see all the support placement um, on the gem itself. But I, on this one, I went and wet sanded the back of it. Now there's still some work to do. I think this one, no, maybe this one. This one's coming out a little bit better. There's still a few less supports, but basically I'm just smoothing out that entire back surface to be perfectly nice and smooth. Um, wet sanding is perfect for this. In a nutshell, if you've ever had sandpaper gunk up on you, it's because the grit is too high. Wet sanding helps eliminate this. You can get a higher grit sandpaper, 200, 400, 600, 1,000, and the water is actually washing away those particles and helping you get a smoother finish. It's the same thing you can do on paint, on cars. There are so many tutorials on YouTube about this. I'm currently working on a tutorial of my own for it, but it is an awesome skill to have. Okay, I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but when it comes to attaching this very heavy resin orb to the end of the sword, Glue's not going to do it, and if it does, it's going to make a mess and probably ruin the clarity if I get it nice and shiny. So what I've gone and done is drilled a... Let's get that out there. I took a drill, and I took a nut and a bolt. So now what I'm able to do is actually thread this orb onto this nut and bolt, and I'm going to melt and bury this bolt into the print itself. So this is going to get melted down into the orb right here. And I was just doing some size testing and now I know it goes down far enough. So I threw another, um, so I threw another bolt just to make this base even as wide as possible. Cause I don't want this spinning inside the print. Once this is in there, I need it to stay in there. So I'm gonna um, use my, using my soldering iron, I'm gonna melt and bury this bolt into the print itself. It's gonna be a mixture of super glue I'm just gonna fuse it in there permanently, PLA weld and just fill that in. This way I can take the orb and just screw it right on and there's no mess. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> All good. I can, I can hurt somebody with this. Ooh. Apologies, my camera fogged up here a little bit, but once I was happy with the wet sanding of the orb, I then went and started to hit it with a 1K clear coat. And you're gonna see me do this with the gems later. It was coming out so nice, but I wanted to take it one step farther and I've done this on similar projects before. I took some cutting car compound, the same stuff you use on car paint, and I actually buffed and polished the orbs clear coat even more. It came out so smooth and I wish I had time to do this on more prints because the clarity you get on it is just amazing. Now it's time for the gems. I'm gonna go and do the exact same thing. I went and wet sanded all of them till they were nice and smooth. Now I need to tape them down so I can clear coat them. I need to clear coat the fronts and backs. So I'm going to focus on doing the backs first. I'm gonna tape them face down on some strips of tape and then secure that to a plate or something. This way I can soak the backs in clear coat. Once they're dry, I'll then go and flip them over onto their backs and clear coat the front. I don't want any dust or particles falling into this. I want these to come out nice and clear. This way, when I put some type of uh, chrome foil or tape on the back, you can see right through them and they're gonna look great. But here are the gems all clear coated, the backs dry, took them off, flipped them over, did the fronts and they looked beautiful. I am so happy with how these turned out. So with the clear coat dry, the gems came out exactly how I wanted. They were ready for some type of reflective backing. Um, off camera, I had done some testing with some foil tape that you can actually see sitting on the desk behind the orb, but I ultimately landed on these Maltov chrome paint pens and just covering the back in them because it dried nice and smooth and gave me a nice almost mirror finish on the inside of the gems to add that much more depth and clarity. They turned out really cool and this was just the best, best method to get me to where I wanted to be. With the gems all but done, it was time to start putting some color onto the rest of the sword. Again, once I was done with the sanding and priming and smoothing, whatever, 
I went and covered the blade and the cross guard in a matte or satin black. I didn't want to go straight gloss. We're going to use the 1K clear coat for that later. So I was just dousing everything in this Krylon um, semi-gloss or satin black, whichever one you want to get. It was pretty tricky painting the blade because it didn't really fit in my paint booth, but I was just trying to get a nice consistent coat on it and take however much time you need with this. If you need to sand some stuff back down and go over with a couple coats, please do. Take your time. The blade is not gloss black, it's just a wet satin paint right now. However, once the cross guard was dry, I went and hit it with a 1K clear coat because this is gonna make the gold stand out as good as possible. Just look how nice that looks. For this, I am using a Montana Gold. It's what I used on my Dr. Fate helmet, and I think this was gonna be the absolute best option. Um, definitely experiment with this paint because you do need to put it on rather wet and a little bit of a thicker paint, but you also don't want it to run. So definitely take your time with it. After I got one side done, I had to very carefully spin it around. I hadn't thought about that without ruining it. And then I did the other side and just gave it enough time to dry. Um, this paint does not like to be touched, but luckily I don't have to touch it since it's on the cross guard. There are ways to clear coat it, but it is a pain in the butt, so I didn't even bother. I'm very happy with the results. Look at how nice this gold came out. I could not have picked a better color. I love it. Well, since Yoru is the blackest blade of the sea, I decided to go with some Musou Black. After some research online, it turns out it's actually better than Black 3.0 and getting a nice matte finish. However, there was a massive learning curve with this stuff. And yes, I'm aware I should have very much been wearing a respirator. I had no idea how bad this stuff was for you until after I had already filmed this. Um, it did keep clogging my airbrush. I had to keep playing around with mixing water in it since it's a water-based acrylic. Um, I don't really have any good tips on getting it to work. Experiment, play around with it. It definitely took me a little bit to get the hang of it, but you also can't go on wet with this paint. The trick is to let it fall onto the part you're painting and build up different angles and layers. This way it can catch the light and absorb it instead of making one smooth surface. You cannot clear coat this stuff. You cannot protect this stuff. Uh, this blade is basically untouchable. However, after everything's said and done, it looks incredible. At certain angles, it looks fake, like it isn't even paint. It just looks like a cardboard cutout or a skin I haven't unlocked yet. I love it. With the blade all but done, it was time to start gluing in the gems. And since I had painted the backs of the gems with that chrome paint, I was able to just super glue the gems in. You weren't gonna see the glue anyway, thanks to the chrome protecting it. Um, pretty simple cyanoacrylate glue. I just didn't use the activator because it would ruin the gold. Took my time, glued them in, and this was a very satisfying part of the build, seeing it all come together. But definitely be careful in this process because I did have some glue drip on the gold and it just immediately ruins it. But all the sanding and headache and testing and clear coating more than paid off. I loved how nice these gems looked against the gold cross guard. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. Final assembly was definitely the tricky part. Um, I'm wearing rubber gloves because I can't really touch the gold without leaving fingerprints, but I also don't want to touch the blade to risk ruining the black. So this definitely was a little bit of a tricky thing to navigate. Eventually I was able to slide everything through and get the cross guard over the blade. After that, it was a matter of just putting the handle on and you can see my face of absolute pure excitement picking this thing up for the first time after all the paint is done. The last thing left to do is to just wrap the handle and we're pretty much done. <laughs> all done. I love that it is stable enough for me to hold out. I can hold it with one hand. Mostly it's, it only weighs about seven pounds, but I can swing it, which is awesome. <laughs> At certain angles, the blade just looks fake. You can see finally with some sunlight coming through, you can definitely see the angles of it. But when it's farther back in shadow, it just looks like a cutout or like I said before, a skin I haven't unlocked in a game yet. The handle is just some white fabric I got at Hobby Lobby. I layered it a couple times and glued it into place. Works perfectly. Uh, pick your poison when doing it. The sun's ruining my shot. It definitely has some flaws and imperfections, but I kind of think it makes it a little bit nicer, especially some of the issues on the gold. Um, it's gotten a little nicked or scuffed up, but I think it adds more to it being a weapon of war. It's a sword. It's not going to be perfectly clean. For anyone wondering, all said and done, the sword is seven feet tall. I am five foot eight, so you can use that as some context. This is to scale to Mihawk in the show, who 
is six foot six. And this is the result if a normal person actually was standing next to it. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave them down below. I'll read them all and I'll do my best to respond to as many as possible. But this was such an amazing build. It is easily turned into my favorite prop I have made. I love this thing. I just need to figure out a way now to hang it on the wall. Um, I'm gonna need more wall space. But uh, as always guys, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. Yeah.